Alright, so before I proceed, I wanted to talk to you about this uh, image right here and where it's from. Actually, in Mexico, so you can see it's copper colored uh, Native Americans. So, uh, if you Google uh, Bonampak murals, you're going to get this. As you can see, all these images from this actual uh, Mayan temple they actually found inside. The painting was still preserved, and it actually tells you, you know, how they look like. So, let's read a little bit about it. Alright, it says here, the discovery of the Bonampak murals. As you can see, it says, the classic Maya site of Bonampak in the state of Chiapas, Mexico. So it's located in Chiapas, Mexico. It's best known for its mural paintings. 
The murals cover the walls of three rooms in the so-called Temple de las Pinturas, or Temple de las Pinturas, Temple of the Paintings, or Structure 1, a small building on the first terrace of Bonampak's Acropolis. And this is one of the murals uh, in this uh, temple, as you can see. Uh, the hue or the color of their skin. This is another mural there. And I'm going to give you a little close-up of this. Just want you to see how it looks like from far away. These people uh, own the second or right under the king of Maya. They have dreadlocks. So here they, how they, you can see the dreadlocks, right, coming out of their hair. Here in the rainforest of Central America, a thousand years ago, a great civilization perished. It was already ancient at that time. Born in the days of Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, it outlived the Roman Empire and the reign of Charlemagne. But by the time the Spaniards invaded the New World and discovered this startling history, its greatest achievements were long in the past. The classic temples and palaces of the Maya had lain in ruin for five centuries. The torrid swamplands bordering the Gulf of Mexico produced one of the earliest high cultures in the Americas, famous for its colossal sculpture of helmeted men with thick lips and flat noses. Thick lips and flat noses. These huge basalt heads, up to nine feet high and weighing as much as 40 tons, were produced at La Venta. Across the continent, near the Pacific coast of Mexico, in the high Sierra surrounding the present city of Oaxaca, rise the extensive ruins of Monte Alban. The Olmecs had built pyramids of earth, but the Zapotecs, who lived here, constructed theirs of finely cut stone. The earliest Zapotec sculpture, thought to date from about 500 BC, shows Olmec influence. Traditionally called danzantes, or dancers, these strangely rubbery, puffy-mouthed figures may represent corpses, the bodies of enemies slain in battle. Many are marked with hieroglyphic inscriptions, which, though we cannot translate them, prove that here, too, the use of writing was known early. Teotihuacan called itself the gathering place of the gods, chief among whom was the feathered serpent, still worshipped at the time of the Spanish conquest as Quetzalcoatl. These cultures were all, at various times, in contact with the Maya, a civilization which surpassed them in many ways as it matured to greatness here in lowland Guatemala over a span of 1,500 years. Near the geographic center of this area, the majestic ruins of Tikal. Here in an apparently unpromising environment, overgrown with tropical jungle, the Maya attained heights never equaled by any other American Indian culture. We know almost nothing about Maya government, and little about the daily experience of Maya life. We would know even less were it not for the discovery of this unimposing looking building, which in 1946 was publicized to the world by a filmmaker named Giles G. Healy. For here is the fabled Bonampak, a name which means in Maya, painted walls. The building contains three rooms, each of which is covered, walls and ceiling, with a virtual encyclopedia of scenes at a Maya court. These murals have enabled scholars to reconstruct much more completely the details of ritual, costume, social custom, and life as it was lived in such centers as Tikal, Copan, and Palenque during the 4th to 9th centuries AD. The pigments have been amazingly preserved by mineral deposits on the plaster, enabling us to make accurate renderings, to see, for example, that though the Maya were not a notably warlike people, they did carry out military raids and took prisoners, perhaps for religious sacrifice.
The hallmark of the classic period is polychrome pottery. This, called the Chama vase, shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. So did you guys hear that? He said, these ain't black-skinned Indians. This is black paint. Yeah, can you believe he said that? Dodge your own hijack right here. All right, because they're trying to be subliminal here. And they're lying right here. They're trying to act like this is pain. So everybody got black paint on, right? Oh, they also got hair wraps and dreadlocks, right? All right, so let's hear that one more time in case you missed it. All right, let's hear them uh, with the hijack. The hallmark of the classic period is polychrome pottery. This, called the Chama vase, shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. Shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. Shows not black-skinned natives, but Indians wearing black paint. All right, so I wanted to show uh, this article I found, um, and it's going to show some of the uh, images that uh, exist in Bonham Park, uh, in the Bonham Park murals, I believe, in some other places, but most of them, I think, in Bonham Park or only in Bonham Park. Uh, the archaeological site is, uh, I think, you know, pyramid inside the walls there. And the name of this article is um, Trumpets and Classic Maya Vase Paintings. The iconographic identification of instrumental assembles. Uh, this is from the Research Center for Music Iconography, the Graduate Center, City University of New York. All right. This is from Music and Art, Volume 36, Number 1 and 2, Dance and Image, on pages 219 to 230. All right. If you want to go ahead and uh, look for this. All right. So. Has a lot of good information. Let me just read a little bit in the beginning. It says that starting point of the following considerations, I would like to quote from an article by Mary Miller entitled The Boys in the Bonham Park Band, in which the author, as an almost inevitable reference in Maya music iconography, refers to the famous murals of Structure One, Room One at the classical archaeological site of Bonham Park in Mexican state of Chiapas. There, a group of musicians consisting of five gourd rattle players, a man beating a tall cylindrical skin drum, it says Maya Pax, Nahuatl Huehuet, three turtle carapace players and separate separated from the former by a group of dancers or actors. Two trumpeters followed by a man with somewhat unclear musical attributes is depicted in a procession-like manner during a ceremony. Miller assesses the importance of this instrumental ensemble as follows. All right, so they talk to talk about how the band and uh, but this author's uh, I was reading it, you know, before I want to read all of it, but he he's trying to say it's not just a band, you know, um, and he goes on his reason what he thinks it is. But I want to go ahead and show you the images that they're talking about. That was just one example. All right. And they have these codes, these images. I've shown them before, uh, like K159. It says where a pair of actor dancers, a woman and a man is flanked by two musicians who play gourd scraper and small ceramic drum respectively all right and then it says and we have seen in k4120 the providing of fragmentary musical information is not uncommon device in maya vase paintings this shows two in the rather relaxed palace scene in k1453 where the musicians appear almost completely hidden behind a sort of column at one extreme at the painting all right so they're talking about the different images that we're about to look at all right now he says conclusions identification not just of the musical signs example musical instruments displayed in a given pictorial record but also the relationship between them is a basic iconographic concern one must assume that one on the basis of such set of musical signs a culturally informed observer was able to reconstruct with a certain precision the musical order and texture of the depicted event and perhaps even to make it sound mentally one can also assume that this was the case even when those music musical signs were not of a quasi ethnographic but of rather general or fragmentary nature all right so let's just get to the good part which i wanted to show you uh all right so this is one uh vase let me just go ahead and, uh, an example of a vase right now you see who you see there all right with a jaguar on him <laughs> he got a little jaguar on his shoulder all right could be dreadlocks here you see the phenotype here all right this is copper colored all right so this is a maya vase it says polychrome vase is slightly concave shape showing a kneeling man who holds an embellished trumpet an embellished trumpet see that possibly maya lowlands late classic 
All right. This is K5390. All right. Now we got this face. Hold on, make sure we got all of it. All right. Let me just zoom into the top one. All right, so you see all these people right here. Do you see that? Who is that right there? The carrion, probably a royal person right here. You got the little guy here. He might be a midget. He might be a little kid. Or they might be giants, right? Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> but you can see who these are, right? This is some Abo Originals right here. All right. Abo Originals, Copper Color Tribes of America. All right. This is like the same image, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, the same image. All right. Now, let's read a little bit of the information on it. It says, top, professional scene with four trumpeters carrying instruments on their shoulders and one musician blowing on a concho. Chama region, Guatemala, all right? This is from Guatemala, this image we just saw, all right? Guatemala, late classic, all right? And then we got this image. I've shown these images a lot. I have uh, basically... Uh, these uh, on, I have photoshopped them and put them up, you know, made designs out of them. Uh, let's zoom into this one. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. This is the one that shows this guy here in the middle with his long dreadlocks. Do you see his long dreadlocks? All right. And you see how these are all aboriginals, copper colored tribes of America. All right. You see that? Who's depicted on the bases and walls? all over the Americas, you see? Do these people look like the modern ones? Not necessarily, not really. But you see this guy right here, right in the middle with his long dreadlocks, all right? You can see this white part right here. This means it was scraped off or something came off. For some reason, it was scraped off or taken off, all right? So this guy completely, his whole body was scraped off. But you see this guy right here with his long dreadlocks, all right? All right, let me just uh, read the info. It says, sacrificial scene with the following musical elements. Four calabash trumpets on the right, two gourd rattles, a cylindrical drum, a turtle carapace, and possibly some sort of vocal expression on the left. Maya lowlands. All right. Then we got this image right here. And does the info right here so you can see it. Pause it if you like. This is from Northern Petén region, where they're finding thousands of structures right now with their lighter technology. Now, I want to read this one right here. It says, palace scene with a dancer. All right, this is the dancer probably right here. And a musical ensemble consisting of at least two rattles, three trumpets, and possibly a drum of unique trapezoid shape. Maya Lowlands. All right, so let's just zoom in real quick. You see that? Abo Originals. All right. They're not brown skin or dark skin or painted black because of ceremonial purposes what they, that's what they try to say today some most a lot of these so-called mayas of today and i uh, know these are aboriginals these are what you would call an african-american today these are people that were uh taken to you know uh you know be servants brought to plantations all over the americas you know it might be your ancestors your origin you ended up in, you know, the Southeast, the East Coast, the Northeast, you know, Texas, wherever. But this might be your origin, you know, where your people come from. These are the same people right here. These are Aboriginals, as you can see. And you can see they had music. They had all this going on. There's civilization here, all right? See? Do you remember now who you are? Look at this guy right here. All right? Now we got this image. Hmm. It says two dancer actors. All right. They're acting. This is a play and everything. Flanked by two musicians playing a small drum and a chord scraper, respectively. All right. From the Maya Lowlands. Zoom in on this image. All right. What do you notice here? Look at this guy's dreadlocks. You see that? Look, you see his long nose. Is that Pinocchio? What is this? Is he a little beard? He has a beard. He has a long nose. He has dreadlocks. This guy got dreadlocks too. Got a little wrap on his head. They got the instruments going. Is that a bagpipe? What is he playing? All right. The Maya glyphs right here. The writing. You got her and wear her dreadlocks. 
Got him with his uh, hair wrapped, right? Got his dreadlocks in there probably. Or this could be his dreadlocks down here. You see this hanging in the back? That could be his dreadlocks. Well, I think, actually, I think that's like a ribbon they have around their waist that he has. But who are these? These are aboriginals, all right? It almost looks like their, their skin could have been darker. I don't know, but either way, a lot of complexions, different types of copper, all right? But, you know, these are aboriginals. Just look at the dreadlocks, all right? We got another image right here. Let me read it. It says a lively palace scene with two long calabash trumpets and a conch trumpet, presumably played by musicians hidden behind some kind of column. The Maya Lowlands. All right. And where is this located? It says here, Cambrera National Museum of Australia. You see where this image is being stored, this vase? Oh, oh, so they have this in Australia, but they don't have this in the hood, so you can see it, right? Is this in your museums locally? You can be like, oh, these are Mayas right here. Look at this royal person right here with his long nails. He got his dreadlocks. You see his dreadlocks coming down. See his complexion. So-called Negro. Would be called an African-American today. Now remember, this is from their own base paintings. This is how they depicted themselves, all right? This is how they depicted themselves, all right? He got a little guy right here. Now, is these giants or is this just a little midget guy? You see him? A little darker. Then you got these more. See the different complexions? Do you see the, the this like the like yellowish, lighter? All right, you see darker right here. This dude's really dark right here. And he got a whole red brown complexion going. All right. says here three kneeling trumpeters and a dancer performing in front of a ruler sitting on his throne this is from Petén, guatemala as well all right where's this located this is located in orano maine hudson museum all right all this is spread out throughout the world all these bases and stuff so as you can see the scene you get the trumpeters right here see this guy right here and the probably the king let me just zoom in now all right so you can remember, get a clear perspective of what we're looking at here. All right. Now you see. So how can anybody doubt this today? And I know a lot of people out there watching right now. And they say they've been following me for a while, but a lot of you are new and you're coming here. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, good, great job, Kuri Mail. You know, great job showing Africans over here before Columbus. And I'm like, no, you're not understanding. These are not Africans. These are aboriginal to America. You were told history in reverse. You were told history in reverse. And we actually went and civilized the world from here. All right. Mayas, Nagas, you know, that's all the same. Mayas went to Egypt. All right, people from here, South America went to Egypt, all over the world. You know, corn is from over here. We brought corn all over the world, agriculture, sports. Now look, see, we're talking about music and instruments. You see, this was a high civilization. They had time to make music and party and stuff. All right, and their ceremonies and make instruments. You're talking about we didn't have none of that stuff here. All right, and he's pointing at him like, yo, you better do this. And this guy's pointing at him too. They're both pointing at him. You see what's going on? I wonder what's going on here. If we could read this writing, we could have deciphered it, right? Don't rely, don't, don't go with the whole uh, imaginary lines, these boundaries they created in countries. Uh, you were free to roam in the whole land of Shem, the middle of the earth, all right? the terrestrial paradise. All right. Again, this is, I mean, if you're still pushing the, uh, you know, that <laughs> that there was no so-called Negro or uh, people of color over here and that they all came in slaves, then you don't know, even know what you're talking about. You do no research. And this is in museums all over the world, all right? Again, this is in Maine, in the Hudson Museum. All right, so let's continue. Now we got the same base as in figure one in the rollout format. So this was, remember, the very first image we saw. We only saw one part of it or one side of it. Because remember, this is a cup. A base is basically like a, a or, or something you can put something in, like a, a plant or whatever, drink, ceremonial purposes, whatever. But it's like, looks like a cup, you know. And it says that in the roller format, it's showing a meeting between two groups of people separated by a large embellished trumpet. 
possibly Maya Lowlands, all right? This is in a private collection. These are things people are owned privately. Why do they have the right to own the ancestors' art and pottery and all the things they created? Now, it says two different people separated, right? These, these two guys are, like, really dark. Then you got this guy. He's really red, all right? Talking about the red man, copper color, ruddy, bronze, whatever you want to call it. Look at the gears they got on. Look at him with his bird on his head. Let me just show that. Are we looking at the Jehuti? <laughs> the bird headed? Look at that. Look at the staff he got. Looks almost like an Ankh. Do you see it? Looks almost like an Ankh. His hair, whatever that is, his hat. Look at that. This is deep. Look at the checkered. Look at the clothing. Look at it. I remember he had a Jaguar on his shoulder. All right, look at these people on this side. Wow, look at that. I'm talking about today, this person or these people would be considered African Americans, but these are Mayas. All right, so this is way before photography. So, you know, of course, they're going to have real pictures of these people. All right. But look at this. This is so revealing to me. All right, we got this other image right here. Let's see, it says ball game scene, a ball game, All right? Ball game. Hey, who be dominating ball games? <laughs> scene with a personage kneeling on a platform and holding a big concho under his right arm, the Maya Lowlands. So let's zoom in a little bit, just even though it's black and white. All right, dreadlocks. A ball game, right? All right, check it out. All right, go to the next image. It says here that the ball, uh, another ball game scene with a personage holding a big concho under his arm, and supposedly three trumpeters fl blowing their instruments. So we got a ball game going on, and we got a band, right? Who does that today? Don't don't they do that in football games and stuff? Don't they have like the game going on? And then they got, and you know, especially in college, they got the, the bands with the trumpets and everything. Every time there's a break or halftime or whatever, you know, the marching band. All right, where do they get all this stuff from? Let's zoom in. All right, check it out, ball game. Got the ball right in the middle. We got two teams ready to go at it, three versus three. You see that? Then you got the stands. You got people in the stands. And you got the trumpeters, the entertainment, the music. Here we go. Look at this. They're kneeling. And they're standing. That's weird. So these guys are kneeling. And these guys are standing. The balls, ball games. It's about to be a game. There's about to be a game going on. Again, all aboriginals. All aboriginals. You see? Look at their hair. Wow. They got that little spiky hair, right? All that kind of cut like a flat top almost look at that all right let's continue we got this scene this is a really cool scene so it's a ball game scene with a concho holder and two men probably singing and playing gourd rattles and perhaps a figurine flute maya lowlands lay classic all right so let's zoom in all right Just look at the whole gear. Now, this is interesting. This, to me, it looks like a musical note, right? A guitar string, right? And then when you put the fingers or a musical note, could be the stands representing the stands too and the sport playing and people watching, but I think it means a lot. Look at that. That is it's just ill. And this is the ball. All right, there's a ball game going on. You've been into sports. You've been dominating for ancient since ancient time. You've been dunking, kicking, playing football, carrying, hitting. You know, you've been doing all that since ancient times. All right. That's you. You created this games like basketball, football, hockey, soccer, across everything.
but I just wanted you to see this. I want you to wake up. I want you to feel this. You got to see this is real. Like this is your ancestors here. They're being depicted on these vases on the walls. And it's not looking like the modern day, what they call in Maya today. Right? And this looks like a musical note. Again, let me back up. Do you see it? All right, because we're talking about music, right? Hmm. Next image, let me just back up. We got a ball game, another ball game. I told you, man, these ball games were big. These were big. Ball games were big in these times. You have ball courts all over these cities in Central America, right? South America, even North America, but they didn't have like the sophisticated courts, but they played these sports, right? It says ball game seen with a man blowing a small conch shell. Campeche. This is in Campeche. Late classic. All right. Now, this is held at the Washington, D.C. Smithsonian Institute National Museum of the American Indian. All right. Not Africans, right? American Indian. Let's zoom in. All right. American Indian. But their skin, the complexion is, you know, brown. What you want to say? So called black. Copper. All right. Different shades of it, too. They got their hair wraps all the time. They got dreadlocks like almost all of them have dreadlocks right you think that's a rasta thing oh man look at him with the animal on his head his clothing going all the way up like a little robe on the side you see this is pimp all right remember this is a ball game look at the little guy right here he ain't playing either let's go to the next image and this is a ball game scene again it's a scene with two musicians blowing a long calabash trumpet and a conch shell, respectively. The Maya Lowlands. All right. Let's zoom in. Boom. Look at that. All right. I don't know if the image, the discoloration on this, but these look a little lighter. But you can kind of see a little discoloration, right? Like they were darker. But yeah, might also be just lighter skin complexion people. He got a bird on his head. <laughs> what is that? An eagle? What is that? A raven? What is this? A deer? Kangaroo? What is that? <laughs> all right. So they all got some kind of uh, on their head. This side doesn't. All right. So check it out. These people got animals on their head. This is one team. All right. And then this is another team on the other side. And I just noticed there's always like the first one. Or these first two guys are like down or kneeling. These two are standing up with the trumpets coming in, like with their music, ready to go at it. All right, you can see the lines in the back again. Is that a musical note? All right. But that's you. Do you remember now what you, how you used to chill and, and you know, how you used to, this is how you lived. This is how you live in ancient times. You didn't live in a jungle over there half naked, um, you know, on the other side of the world. No, you lived in uh, great cities, civilizations with art, music, education, science, you know, sports, everything. All right. And that's uh, the end of this uh, article. And I just wanted you to guys, you guys to see, you know, how they have research and have this collection of your bases all over the world depicting a, what you would say is a Negro. Uh, but as my, these are Mayas, right? These are Mayas. All right. You can't deny that. All right, Mayas.